Hi everyone. So this is the fifth lecture on the chapter of OMM. So this will be the second last lecture. Okay, it won't be very long. We'll be talking about gingival sulcus and tentogingival junction. And these topics are mainly asked in short answer. Okay, so starting with the gingival sulcus. Uh, so I have already discussed what gingival sulcus is. It is the space between the inner aspect of gingiva and the tooth. So this space you can see over here, if I zoom in, the gingiva kind of goes like this, right? So this was the free gingiva, we have already seen that. So this space between gingiva and the tooth, this is called gingival sulcus, okay? The sulcular epithelium is non-keratinized in humans. It lacks epithelial ridges and is thinner in the epithelium of gingiva. So what this means is that this epithelium the epithelium of this uh, gingival sulcus it is non-keratinized in humans okay so this is not keratinized this epithelium okay and it lacks epithelial ridges so the ridges we used to see these are absent these are not present it forms a smooth interface with the amina propria okay the average depth of the gingival sulcus is around two millimeters so this is around two millimeters deep and if it goes deeper than this, then we generally have something called a periodontal pocket. Okay. And it is mainly due to some disease. Okay. So moving on, uh, the next topic is gingival, gingival junction. So what happens in, uh, what we'll talk about in dentogingival junction? We'll talk about this epithelium and dentogingival junction. And then we'll talk about uh, development of the dentogingival junction. Okay. So dentogingival junction is a junction between the gingiva and the tooth. So the point where the gingiva and the tooth meet, this is the dentogingival junction. Okay. The epithelium of the gingiva which gets attached to the tooth is called junctional or attachment epithelium. So this portion of the uh, gingiva, okay, the blue portion you see over here, this is the junctional epithelium. So basically the epithelium which gets attached to the gingiva, to the tooth, and the epithelium of the gingiva which gets attached to the tooth, it is called the uh, junctional epithelium, the okay? junctional or attachment epithelium. The junctional epithelium resembles the reduced enamel epithelium in structure. Okay, So the structure of this blue colored uh, enamel epithelium it is similar to the reduced enamel epithelium. If you don't know what reduced enamel epithelium is, uh, so basically when we have this uh, tooth erupting, okay, so after the tooth formation has taken place, the enamel, so this is the amyloblast, okay, the amyloblast at the top, they uh, form a structure that is called reduced enamel epithelium. So they basically kind of form a layer over the tooth like this, and this layer is called reduced enamel epithelium, right? So this uh, junctional epithelium, it resembles the reduced enamel epithelium in structure, okay? Uh, and what is the structure like? It is, the, it is a basal layer with a few layers of flattened cells, okay? So there is this basal layer present, and then it has a few layers of flattened cells, these cells, okay? Other than this, if I talk about this in here, right? The junctional epithelium extends up to 2 mm on the surface of the tooth. So this is about 2 mm, okay? Junctional epithelium extends of about 2 mm on the surface of the tooth, okay? It has highest turnover rate of five to six days, okay? So it regenerates very readily, so it like gets produced very fast, okay? The junctional epithelium is highly permeable. It is highly permeable, why? Because it has large intercellular spaces between them. So you see this space, like white space, everything. These are the intercellular spaces and they have huge intercellular spaces. So what this helps in is at first, because of these intercellular spaces, what you can have is, um, just a second, you can have um, bacteria. You can have bacteria getting into uh, this epithelium and it can cause various infections, okay? But other than this, you also have protection. You have protection. How do you have protection? So you have various neutrophils, uh, so the, you have various neutrophils that have an easy, easy passage in and out of the epithelium because of the intracellular spaces. And it also permits the flow of cervical or gingival fluid, okay? Then uh, Langerhans cells, 
they can also migrate to this epithelium in case of infection of inflammation. So what in general, what happens is that because of these intercellular spaces, the, uh, this junction epithelium provides an easy passage to the bacteria. But along with that, is, it also has great immunity because of these uh, neutrophils and Langerhans and cells. Okay, so they also provide great immunity to this junctional epithelium. Now moving ahead with the development of the dendrogingival junction. Uh, so how does the dendrogingival junction develop? Right, when we talk about it, this is the tooth. This is uh, we have this tooth. And after the tooth, the entire formation has taken place. We have this, this was the layer called inner enamel epithelium, if you remember. Okay, so this is the inner enamel epithelium which had an ameloblast. Now, after the entire tooth formation has taken place, these ameloblasts, they form a layer, they reduce themselves into a layer that is called the primary cuticle. Okay, so they form something called the, after enamel formation, the ameloblasts form something called a primary enamel cuticle. Okay. And this entire enamel organ, if you see the blue structure, this is the enamel organ that reduces itself into the reduced enamel epithelium. Okay, so there are two structures formed. First, we have the primary cuticle, first layer, and then we have the reduced enamel epithelium. Both these structures form a layer over this tooth. Okay, this tooth. Then the tooth is now erupting. Okay, it is going up. Now it meets the oral mucosa. So when it meets, meets the oral mucosa, when the tip goes into the oral mucosa, it fuses with the oral mucosa. Okay. So the reduced enamel epithelium and the oral mucosa fuse. So we have this layer called reduced enamel epithelium, the blue layer. It will fuse with the oral mucosa, right? The remnant of the primary enamel cuticle after eruption, this is called the Nesmith's membrane. So we studied this in enamel as well. So what Nesmith's membrane is, it is basically a remnant of this primary enamel cuticle. So if somehow it remains over the tooth, it is called Nesbeth's membrane. Okay, so uh, moving on with the development. So the oral mucosa and the reduced enamel epithelium, they fuse together. Okay, and then now the tooth keeps erupting. Now what will happen is that after the crown tip emerges out of the oral mucosa. So the, now the tip is emerging out of the oral mucosa. This reduced enamel epithelium, it is now called primary attachment epithelium. So you will notice that it has shortened, okay? It gets really short and condensed. And now it is called primary enamel, uh, primary attachment epithelium after the tip of the tooth has emerged out of the oral mucosa into the oral cavity. So here we have oral cavity. After we can see the tip, now it is called the primary attachment epithelium. Now, after the complete tooth eruption has taken place, okay, so this is my enamel covered crown. The enamel will extend to somewhat like this, okay, the gingiva covers a great portion of the enamel, right? So, one third of the enamel is covered by the gingiva. So, after the complete eruption has taken place, uh, uh, the gingival sulcus, so you see this gingival sulcus has developed, okay? So, this portion which is attached and the portion of the gingiva which is attached to the tooth we have the primarily um, attached ep epithelium over here so this blue color portion you see on the enamel attached to the enamel this is the primary attached epithelium okay so the gingival sulcus is bounded by the attachment epithelium at its base so you see the if i zoom in you see that the sulcus is ending over here and over here, what else do we have? So this is the sulcus. It is ending over here. And over here, we have this uh, primary attachment epithelium. So this gingival sulcus is bounded by this primary attachment epithelium at its base. This will go around the entire tooth along its circumference. Okay. So this is how the dentogingival junction develops. Okay. Now moving ahead to uh, with the shift of dentogingival junction. This is another short answer question topic. Uh, what is happening is that uh, your gingiva won't remain at the same place for your entire life. So first we have, uh, I'll just read over the introduction first. The position of gingiva on the surface of tooth changes with time. Okay, when the first, when the tooth first uh, reaches the plane of occlusion, 
one third to one fourth of the enamel still remains covered by the gingiva. I'll explain this. Uh, and there are three other eruption processes. Okay, so first is active eruption. It is the movement of tooth towards the occlusal plane. So what is happening first? I have this tooth. Okay, uh, this is tooth of a baby. The baby has no tooth right now. Now the tooth is erupting. So this tooth will go up the oral mucosa, right? It will go up like this, and it will reach this plane of occlusion. So when the tooth reaches the plane of occlusion, what is happening is, so you can see that one third of the enamel so this blue portion was enamel right one third of this enamel portion is covered by the gingiva right so this is called active eruption so when the tooth is going towards the uh, plane of occlusion right now the second is passive eruption so what is happening happening in passive eruption uh, we saw this uh, attachment epithelium right so this attachment epithelium must also be present over here so it must also be present like over here and over here. Now what is happening in passive eruption is your oral mucosa, uh, it will start moving downwards. Okay, So it will move downwards like this because of age or something or some pathology. So this oral mucosa will start moving downwards. Now this primary epithelium, attachment epithelium, uh, this will also recede. Okay, so Then this will also move down. It will also come over here. It will move along with the gingiva. So this is called passive eruption. The separation of the primary attachment epithelium from the enamel. enamel. So this will move down so much that now you can see it is attached to the cementum. It used to be up here. It used to be attached to the enamel, this primary enamel epithelium. But now it is attached to the cementum. So this is the passive eruption. Now there is secondary attachment epithelium. What is this? So after uh, this has uh, come to the cementum, the primary attachment epithelium, after it has come to the cementum and the gingiva has receded too much, this will, uh, this was this was like uh, similar to reduced enamel epithelium, right? But now it will change, it will change its structure, and gingival cells will replace it. Okay, so this will be derived from the replacement of the primary attachment epithelium by the cells derived from the gingival epithelium. So what was, just if you go back, so this primary attachment epithelium, it was derived from the enamel organ. It was derived from the reduced enamel epithelium. What will happen with the secondary attachment epithelium? This structure will be lost and some cells from gingiva, okay, so some cells, uh, cells from the gingiva, they will come in and they will replace they will replace this primary uh, attachment epithelium so this is secondary attachment epithelium okay this will be formed when the gingiva has receded too much now there are two other terms first is the anatomical crown and second is the clinical crown so what is the difference between anatomical crown and the clinical crown i have this tooth okay and let's i'll just make a bit of it Okay, so I have this tooth. This is the crown. This is the root. Okay, so this is my anatomy. Uh, so if I, this portion is the enamel covered portion. Okay, this is the enamel covered portion. And then the bottom is the cementum. This is the root. So my anatomical crown is this portion. Whatever portion is covered with the enamel, this is my anatomical crown. And what is the clinical crown? So if I have this, um, I'll just take this one, this mucosa. Okay, so I have this mucosa. Now, if this much portion is covered by the gingiva, so only this much portion is my clinical crown. Okay, if this much portion, if, the, if my gingiva has receded, and now this much portion is visible in the oral cavity, so this is the clinical crown now. So whatever portion is visible in the oral cavity, that is the clinical crown. And the enamel covered portion, this is the anatomical crown. Okay, now moving ahead with the stages of crown exposure. So this is basically how your uh, gingiva recedes in the cavity. Okay, stages of crown exposure is your recession of gingiva. So there are four stages of crown exposure. 
and this is the same as passive eruption okay so passive eruption was this recession of gingiva this is same as passive eruption so there are four stages first second third and fourth right so what is happening in the first stage they basically you have to consider three points first is the position of your bottom of gingival sulcus okay this position then and the position of reduced enamel epithelium and with the size of the anatomical crown and the clinical crown okay so uh, just remember this the first and second stages these are normal and these can the this recession can happen due to age but the third and fourth stage these stages are gen generally due to some pathology okay so the, this should not be considered normal now in the first stage the bottom of the gingival sulcus it is at the enamel portion okay so this is still at the enamel covered crown portion and the reduced enamel epithelium it is at the cemento enamel junction so you see that the reduced enamel epithelium it is ending at the cemento gingival junction right it is not going beyond at the cementum the anatomical crown it is greater than the clinical crown so my clinic my anatomical crown I'm sorry my anatomical crown this should not be great is this entire portion right but my clinical crown is uh, only this much if i take the gingiva so my gingiva is extending up to here so my clinical crown is only this much right so the anatomical crown is greater than the clinical crown then in the second stage uh, so this this much recession or this is the normal uh, normal position of the gingiva so it, um, it you'll see this at up to the age of 20 years generally okay now in the second stage what is happening that the uh, bottom of the gingival sulcus it has now shifted like downwards okay it is still at the enamel it has not gone beyond the enamel but it has shifted downwards now the reduced enamel epithelium and the apical end is on cementum so over here the apical end apical end means the bottommost end like the bottommost portion it was at the cemento enamel junction but now it is on the cementum this apical end um, yes it is on the cementum over here right now still the anatomical crown is greater than the clinical crown because the gingival sulcus is present on the enamel so the gingiva is extending up to the enamel and it will cover some portion of the enamel so this is my clinical crown and my anatomical crown was up to over here okay now in the third stage what has happened that the gingival sulcus it has shifted to the cemento enamel junction okay so this is the cemento enamel junction and the bottom of the gingival sulcus is over here and the reduced enamel epithelium is now completely on the cementum okay so right now because uh, the enamel covered portion is on uh, is up to the cemento enamel junction so if this is my enamel it will end over here so in this stage and this is my cementum the anatomical crown and the clinical crown they are equal so this is my anatomical crown the enamel covered portion and you can see since the gingiva is extending up to here so even my clinical crown is up to here okay so they are equal in the third stage now the fourth stage Uh, the gingival sulcus it may go beyond um, the cemento enamel junction, so it can in this stage we can see some root exposure. Okay, which is really bad. So we can see some root exposure in this stage, and now your gingival sulcus, the bottom of the gingival sulcus, now it is on the cementum, and uh, your reduced enamel epithelium it is also on the cementum, and the anatomical crown. now it is bigger than the clinical crown how is it bigger so i have this enamel covered portion which is my anatomical crown okay and then i have this cementum so this is my uh, anatomical crown and my clinical crown is now up to here so since the gingiva has receded so much this is my clinical crown which is bigger than my anatomical crown okay so this is it uh, for omm there is one more topic remaining now that is um, eight changes eight changes and some clinical aspects that will be a really short lecture okay so thank you 
like it if you like the video please share and subscribe thank you